take a look at a second design problem now. Uh, and in the first problem, we looked at two uh, roof rafters, and now we're actually going to look at a chandelier. Okay, so a light fixture that's hung from a ceiling uh, by two chains. Okay, so one chain is 46 centimeters long and forms an angle of 60. The ceiling, the other chain is 64 centimeters long. We want to figure out the angle that the longer change makes with the ceiling. So first thing we need to do is actually draw a diagram. Okay, so this is a bit of a word problem. So because it's a ceiling, our flat surface is actually going to be on the top. Okay, because most ceilings, at least that are suspended with chains, are flat. So one chain is 46 centimeters long. So let's, there's our, call this 46 centimeters. Uh, and it makes an angle of 60 degrees with the ceiling. So we'll call this angle 60 degrees. Okay. The other chain is 64 centimeters long. Okay, and we want to figure out what angle it makes with the ceiling. We don't know. Okay, uh, and we know, sorry, we know that this is 64 centimeters long. And uh, I'm a terrible artist, so this is my chandelier. It uh, looks lovely. Okay, uh, so that's my, my light fixture. It's terrible, I know, that's why I'm not an art teacher. So, what we need to do now is we have to figure out what is uh, the, this unknown angle, okay? So first thing we should really do is label this triangle because this is actually a triangle, okay? Uh, we've got, we'll call this angle A, angle B, and we'll call this happy little monstrosity angle C, okay? Um, and we can also label the three sides, so Again, we've got side C, small c. We've got side A, because it's across from angle A. And we can label this as side B, because it is across from angle B. Okay. Now, you can notice here that in this particular situation, we can use the uh, sine law because we have a complete angle side length pairing. Okay, we have an angle and a complete side length. Okay, and because we have a complete angle side length pairing, we can use the sine law. So let's write out our sine law. We've got A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which is equal to length C divided by the sine of angle C. Now, in this instance, we actually have no values for the length of side C or the angle side C. So we're going to completely ignore that part. We don't need that part. But we do, however, have values for three of the four other pieces that are remaining uh, in this ratio. So we know that uh, side length A is 64 centimeters, and we know that angle A is 60 degrees. We know that the length of side B is 46 centimeters. We don't know what sine B is. So we're just going to put in sine B. That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, we don't know what sine B is. That's what we're trying to discern. Now, what's really key here is that we have one complete ratio. Okay. We have 64 divided by sine 60. That means we have a value for both the numerator and the denominator, and we can use that as our key to solve. So just like we've done uh, in the past, we're going to use cross multiplication. Okay? So we're going to multiply 64 times sine b, and we're going to multiply 46 times sine 60. So we end up with 46 times sine of 60 degrees, is equal to 64 times sine b. Okay. Now, the term with the uh, variable in it is actually sine b. Okay. So I'm trying to get this piece all by itself. Okay. And right now, sine b is being multiplied by 64. So I need to get sine b all by itself. So what I'm going to do, actually, 
is I'm going to divide both sides by 64 because the opposite of multiplying by 64 is of course dividing by 64. So this leaves me then with sine b is equal to, uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to compute what the left hand side of this is. So I'm going to take 46 times sine 60 all divided by 64 and I'm going to do all of that on my calculator and it's going to spit out a decimal number. It can be a very very long decimal number and I strongly recommend you go to about four decimal places when you get a number like this to get as accurate as you possibly can. So as a decimal this is 0 0.6225 Okay, so approximately uh, 0 0.6622, 0 0.6225, okay? So that is equal to sine B, but I don't quite have the angle yet. So just like we did back in unit one, uh, when we were looking for an unknown angle, we actually have to take the inverse of the sine, okay? And so I'm actually going to do sine to the negative one, times sine b is equal to, in this case, sine to the negative 1 of 0 0.6225. Okay? Now, we know that sine inverse and sine are going to cancel each other out. Okay, because they are opposite operations, just like multiplication cancels out division, addition cancels out subtraction, and so forth. Okay, so I know that I've now got my angle all by itself. Now what I got to do is figure out what is sine inverse uh, of this 0 0.6225. So I'm going to do sine inverse of 0 0.6225, and that's going to equal approximately... 38.5 degrees. Okay, so I now have solved for my unknown angle. Okay. And you can do likewise. So again, you can use the sine law in much the same way as we had done before. It's really important to get a good diagram first to help you understand. You always got to find that angle side length pairing, and then you go through uh, and solve.